Hi, this is Mrs. Robel. This is Chapter 4, Structure of the Atom, Part 3. So in this video, we're going to look at what is an isotope. Um, we're going to explain accurately why atomic masses are not whole numbers. And then lastly, we're going to calculate the number of electrons, protons, or neutrons for a given atom, depending on mass number and atomic number. Okay, so we talked about the discovery of electron and proton. Well, there actually was another subatomic particle, and this man by the name of Chadwick had discovered this particle. He found that the mass of the particle was actually similar to a proton. However, he found that the charge was zero. So because the charge was zero, he considered it neutral, or he called it a neutron. Now, please note, so far we've seen that the relative charge of the electron is a negative one. The proton has a positive charge. Now this new particle that they discovered, they obviously gave it a charge of zero. So notice that the masses of protons and neutrons are shared, whereas the electron is extremely tiny. It's one over 1840. So its mass is very small compared to a proton and neutron. Okay, now you probably have heard of quarks. Um, quarks are essentially fundamental particles that essentially make up what we call hadrons. Um, hadrons in their stable form tend to form protons and neutrons. Um, you can actually classify the type of quarks, um, but we're not gonna get into that because there's so many different types of quarks and the science is still pretty new. Okay, isotopes. So when you hear the term mass number, please note that it is the combination of protons and neutrons, or we call them nucleons together. Isotopes, and this is key. A lot of students struggle with this part here. So when you're looking at isotopes, they share the same number of protons, however, they have a different number of neutrons. The number of neutrons is always going to be different, but the number of protons is always the same. They will share their same atomic number, however, the mass number will be different. So please note, if you want to calculate neutrons, you're going to take the mass number, which is always the bigger number, and you're going to subtract it from the atomic number. Okay, in your book, this is a picture of sodium. Notice that the number that's at the top of the element symbol is bigger. That is the mass number. And then the number underneath it is the atomic number. Same goes with this isotope of sodium. So it has a bigger mass number and a smaller atomic number. As a result, if we subtract uh, 20, 11 from 23, we get 12 neutrons. Or 20, 11 from 24 gives us 13 neutrons. Okay, so here's a chart that um, I'll probably have you practice um, in class together. So please note, if you have 82 as your atomic number, your protons have to be 82. And because this is a neutral atom, it's going to have the same number of electrons. However, if you were to look at the atomic mass for lead, it should be 207. Now, if they tell you that there's eight protons, the mass number has to be eight. And because it's a neutral atom, the electrons have to be eight. If you were to look this up in the periodic table, it is oxygen. And it has an atomic mass of 16. Lastly, if you knew that there were 13, I'm sorry, 30 electrons, there's going to be 30 protons because it's a neutral atom. Therefore, its atomic number is going to be 30. Um, this element is zinc. And if you look on the periodic table, its atomic mass is 65. Okay, so atomic mass, they were doing more and more experiments, and they were finding that they could almost measure a single atom, its mass. Before that, they just assumed that if we take all the elements and we just make hydrogen one, we could base all the relative masses on the mass of hydrogen. Because they would take a group of atoms and they would look at the average atomic mass. 
Now, um, if you look at hydrogen chloride and you determine the ratio of the two elements, 2.74% of the mass is hydrogen and then the remaining is chlorine. Water, we know that 11.1% by mass is hydrogen and then the rest is oxygen. And ammonia, we know that hydrogen has a 17.6% mass and the rest is nitrogen. You could look at salt the same way. Okay, now they originally started off making hydrogen just one. So that means the atomic mass of one hydrogen we would call just one. Now, as they got closer to um, measuring the mass of carbon, they were having some issues there. Um, it wasn't exact. So as a result, they decided that because they could get down to the mass of one element, um, the physicists decided that carbon was a nice compromise. So rather than have hydrogen be one, they were going to make carbon, and more specifically, the isotope of carbon, carbon-12, they would make that exactly 12. Now you're going to ask yourself, why don't I see 12.000 on the periodic table? Well, we're going to talk about why we don't see that. Now notice, because they made carbon-12 exactly 12, um, hydrogen is now no longer exactly 1. It's slightly over 1, but they, they could live with that. So please note that the periodic table, they're all relative masses and they're based on the mass of carbon-12 being exactly 12. Okay, so what does this mean? That means they decided that all the masses on the periodic table, they were going to be measured in atomic mass units, setting carbon-12 to exactly 12. So if we look at one atomic mass unit, please note that it's actually equal to the mass of a proton or a mass of a neutron. So one proton is 1.007276 AMUs. Please note also that the electron is significantly smaller than the proton or the neutron. Okay, now you might notice on the periodic table that the masses are not exactly 12 or one, they're not whole numbers. And the reason why is we have to look at isotopes. Now, th this is from your book. Please note that um, each element has an array of isotopes. And with chlorine, we have two major isotopes. We have mass number 35 and we have mass number 37. So uh, mass number 35, it's abundant. So if we were to look in nature, we would find 75% um, of the chlorine atoms have a mass number 35. And then if we look at mass number 37, the remaining 24.22% of chlorine atoms is a mass number of 37. Now to take that into account, we have to do a weighted average. And all you have to do is just take the atomic mass and multiply it by um, 0.7578 and you get an atomic mass unit. Now that's, that's the percent, or not the percentage, but um, that's the fraction of chlorine that has atomic mass 35. And then you do the same thing with the mass number 37 and notice that it's significantly smaller, and that makes sense because there's only 24% of it in nature. So when you add these two amounts together, you get a weighted average. So notice that it's not a mass of 35 or a mass of 37, it's somewhere in between. And it's usually closer to the more abundant isotope. So notice that the mass of chlorine is actually closer to the mass number 35 as opposed to the mass number of 37. Now we will practice this in class, so you'll have an opportunity to try out your skills with this. Okay, so please note that the mass number is the sum of neutrons and protons. Um, elements with the that are from the same element, they usually have different neutrons, and as a result, 
the different neutrons determine the isotope. Please also note that the atomic mass is a weighted average of the masses of naturally occurring isotopes.